please unmute. Welcome to Samsung Next Meets. My guest today is Malte Barth, partner at Bitcraft, one of the leading VCs focused on gaming. Malte, Malte, what's your fund's focus? <laughs> hello, uh, hello, hello, hello. Thanks for, for having me. Um, second try this time around we make it huh um so at bitcraft we um we we are we are investment platform uh or vc uh so to say uh investing into um games um esports interactive media so to say uh typically seed a stage b stage so pretty early global span large us and western europe um, that's that's uh, in a nutshell what we do. Cool. And is that your talk in the background? Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is synthetic reality, trademark. Just kidding. Oh, very very realistic. <laughs> these these My days, turn. I think I think New York these days, as you mentioned earlier, very rightfully, is probably pretty empty, unfortunately. So I kept mm -hmm. the the busier days to uh, to have it in our minds here. I see. Uh, Malte, you, you worked in strategy consulting, like me. Probably we even worked in the same company. But uh, that's why I need to say... In the same office, even. In the same office. But uh, that's why I, I have to say... I don't want to talk about it, but that's a different... No, definitely not. Definitely not. I just want to say, I will ask you something now, and please, no bullshit loud. What's your fund's added value? Yeah. Like, I, I, what's I, smart I, with your money? So we... we um... So we, we are essentially entrepreneurs turned into VCs and we experts. So we this inch wide mile deep in our field. We only do games. Um, and that really is us being an expert to start with. So we really deep in what, in what we do. And that obviously helps us a lot into understanding audiences and products and technologies and knowing the right people having the right relationships and that accumulates uh, over time. And that obviously helps a lot for, for the companies in, in a sense of um, connections, which in games is super important, right? Uh, to be into the, into the right um, channels, the right partners, right access uh, to talent is key. I think that's where we, we add uh, a significant value to, to our entrepreneurs. Cool. And why are you so excited about gaming? Why is gaming so huge? I mean, the, 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 the gaming is just the better form of entertainment, right? I mean, it's after all, it's sort of the, the entertainment uh, uh, ecosystem, so to say. And when you think about it, like, like what entertains, and then you like go through history and you start with uh, the basic form of entertainment, sitting around the campfire, telling stories, singing songs and dancing, um, and then look through the through the evolution. I think it it, it is just uh, it's just the interactivity, the connectiveness of entertainment, right? Even though you're not in the same room, um, gives a, a lot of value to people. And we see this only. I mean, 2020 has been a, a very very interesting year to to see like how much games connect people, right? Social fabric. And that obviously, uh, like uh, in neuroscience, that spawns very different pieces of the brain as if I'm just uh, only watching a movie alone. Uh, if you would put, uh, put people under, under an FRI scanner, like a, a brain scanner, while playing games connected with people and just watching a movie, you would see very different pieces of the brains been uh, lit up and fired up and that just uh, creates a, a different uh, emotional experience and then and i'm not gonna want to i'm not gonna sell on price here but if you if you also do the math on like you know how much you need to spend per minute mm -hmm. entertained as a end customer so to say mm -hmm. it's just a much better deal on top right um, and I feel the other thing is just has a sense of mastery, right? I mean, it is, it is not something I'm just uh, in front of something and I'm not want to uh, shit on uh, movies, entertain, movie entertainment or whatnot, but like there is, there is a sense of, um, of, of, of learning. There's, there's a sense of, of achievement. There's a, uh, it's, 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 it's intellectually very challenging in most part of, of the gaming, uh, meaning that, that is obviously something which I'm much, much deeper connected with. 
that's that's why I'm thinking it's it's so big, right? And now we only see this unlocking because um, technology allows us uh, to put enough computing power, sort of in in yeah. mass hands, um, at low lower affordable cost, so to say, connected uh, connected on on a on a on a technology which even a few years ago uh, been hard to imagine that this is even possible in markets like up and coming markets, uh, uh, which you know enter so many new gamers on a monthly basis, like India, Southeast Asia. South America and so on and so forth, which uh, which for me is just uh, it's it feels like the beginning. And Monte, what do you foresee for the future of gaming? I mean, we we see more and more um, that you know the virtual reality, for that matter, uh, meaning the game, the experience, the game spawns sort of in your head, and um, uh, and and the physical world starts to to merge more and more. Um, I think that, that that is something which is is is, is pretty big. Uh, we see more and more uh, platforms that can deliver more ex uh, immersive experiences. Uh, I think that's that's another one. So gaming will be you know technically distributed in more and more devices, um, and uh, and then we see more and more emerging social interactions, which I think going to be driving. Um, and again, uh, pointing to the thing I talked about earlier, we see many markets which haven't actually been able to touch any games, right? Think of like places in, again, India, Southeast Asia and whatnot, where we see people who, who play games the first, the, fir the fir first time on a digital device, so to say. And within gaming, what are the most interesting, most attractive areas for you as a VC? I mean, th there's many, uh, there's many angles to play the stack, right? Um, I mean, what I personally, and there is a bit of a matter of taste too, right? I mean, I like, I like to see those places where you can harvest the power of creation um, a lot. And I think that's, that's, that's is another one, which I think gaming is so superior as an entertainment form because it allows almost an unparalleled dimension of, of, of creation right when you think you design a game and think of this cube of opportunities you can play with a game like from art to uh, you know app gameplay to uh, visual to audio to uh, to to haptical and so on and so forth that is a sheer ever-changing sort of thing um, which I think if you can put this I mean and then when the, the other thing which I, th I think significantly changes these days is like games been made by a handful of people in the past, a handful of people, very skilled, very trained, very technical, very artisty and whatnot, right? And when you think like how much more um, people get sophisticated games tools in the hand these days, like amateur style stuff, you, 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 you only see that sort of a, the, the sheer number of creations, you know, spikes, right? And what we all know, it's, it's also, it's a matter of, of numbers and math, right? So put, just put out more, you want to get more, right? And, and I think this is a, back to creation, I think this is, this is where, where I'm getting really excited to, 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 to give uh, humankind a, a, a complete different way of, 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 of creating at scale. And that creates obviously then back to the VC world. Uh, obviously, we're here to make money, uh, make no mistake. Um, so like, you know, we, we, we like to, the stuff that starts scaling, right? And what scales it, are those outlier type of creations, right? You, you have this, uh, uh, the, the, the frequency of creation and you see the top 3% yielding 80% of whatever else dimension value created, right? So, but you only get there if you have all the attempts to get there. So are you saying that, that former strategy consultants like you will be able to create games with the help of these tools? I, I, I definitely think so. Definitely. That's, that's, I mean, it's kind of, you know me well enough. That's why I think you asked that. That's, that's my little inner hope, right? It, I'm not just can grab my guitar to play a song and be creative with it, but, but at some it, point, even. Is there also, sorry, is there also a market on the con consumer side? Like, um, okay, Malta is, is, is building, creating his uh, little own casual game. Um, will there be anyone out there who's interested in, in playing that game? 
I, I think this is, I mean, coming back to what I said earlier, it's just, it's a matter of attempts to put out, right? Mm -hmm. So like think of uh, Addison and his, his creations or Mozart and stuff. When you look, look through sort of a creative output, yes, they created a bunch of outliers, right? But they created also a bunch of uh, average stuff, right? But I think they became so good because they kept trying and they kept mm -hmm. creating more. And I think by the number of creations sheer and the number of attempts, it's this big number game. <laughs> you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be having a hit at some point, right? That makes sense, and that's a great uh, sec into synthetic media. As you know, we at Samsung Next, and I'm personally very excited about synthetic media. And you at Bitcraft are talking about synthetic reality. What is synthetic reality for you, and why are you, are you so excited about it? The, the synthetic reality is is pretty much the space I talked to earlier, where like the base reality of what we call base reality here and like virtual realities, meaning realities that are, you know, specifically created by other developers um, sort of start to blend in consumers perception or, or brains, so to say, right? This is where we see this overlay of, uh, of, of the two layers of, of realities. And the beauty here is obviously you, you blend this into a new form of, perception right which you know can do many things to like the brain so to say and with that the immersion and emotion to to consumers um to to create more entertainment value there does that yeah. make sense that that makes totally <clears throat> sense um i think you said at the beginning that uh that virtual reality uh, will blend together with 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 the real reality going forward um that you will see both worlds merging uh, which brings us to mixed reality, which brings us to the question, the $1 billion question, when will mixed reality reach mass market? Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if I had this number, uh, you know, I would likely not be sitting here. Um, uh, I still sit here uh, because we, we, we place a few bets around it and hopefully hit the right timing. Um, for me, it's it's a it's a. I mean, when you when you talk about mixed reality, that can be very different things, right? Um, and we've been seeing it coming in our deal flow in very in very different shapes and forms, so to say, um, whatever people then call uh, mixed reality. I think it will be it, it will be quite some time. Only like pointing back to to the virtual reality journey and like when how long that train was still in the station and hasn't left the station and people were like uh, jumping up and down for a long time saying how great this is and how massive and whatnot and it it, it just took a lot a long time so i think still with with with, uh, with max, mixed reality i see the same like give it another five to seven years to really come out at at, at scale i'd say directionally okay five to seven years all right but Talking about today, what is one of the most innovative gaming companies you've come across recently and why? So, I mean, uh, obviously we somewhat biased because we invested in a few gaming companies and there, there's, a, there's a, a, a number of interesting um, companies to point to. One company we invested lately is a company called Tilt5, which on the mixed reality um, scale is, you know, out there trying to do uh, to revolutionize the the tabletop gaming experience uh, with glasses so it's if you if you hear these things you go like oh interesting and uh, but you know they go at it very uh, very creatively in terms of how they um, uh, how they go about the uh, holographic um, space and how they actually brand physical and virtual world so to say right why because physical you, you 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 i mean you can play this distributed over the networks and you could be in berlin i could be in lisbon today and we play tabletop together that's more like the mechanics of like uh, like known multiplayer games but you can also sit together physically in one room with a table which i think is a major use case and still look at like be together as a social group which gives us a sense of proximity right physical proximity because we could share a glass of beer which these days we shouldn't but uh, we can um, and we can even touch each other and it's just we really there 
uh, in a social sense and that does something to our brain. At the same time, you know, we can sort of beam ourselves through that lens you know, that Google lens uh, on the tabletop in a tabletop in, in whatever uh, virtual gameplay world, so to say, and then bank a bit on, on both worlds uh, in creating a complete new way of being entertained. That, oh. that, that's one of the things we, we really liked yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a long, it's a long journey. They, they came out with quite some interesting consumer uh, response already with the first version of their hardware. So it's, it's a platform, so to say. Uh, and that, that made us uh, be quite excited about what, what, um, what the company is trying to achieve there. And Malta, with all your entrepreneurial spirit, like limitless entrepreneurial spirit, if you would found a new company, in which area would that be? Yeah, I, I would go back to, 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 the, to the excitement. I also shared earlier, it, it, it would be around harvesting just sheer more numbers of attempts in creation, right? So I would try to put, you know, <clears throat> easy to use uh, tools in as many people's hand as I can uh, to give them the ability to create. And then just by that, create a massive amount of attempts to create something cool. Uh, and then have the ability for, for that community to iterate on their stuff. So I, there's another very innovative company in our portfolio mm -hmm. um, called Koji, um, mm -hmm. which essentially allows you uh, to create uh, on a no-code basis, so to say, and then give that uh, piece of creation like a piece of DNA to the community and then have the community alter pieces of the DNA. So like you would not just harvest only the, the, the original idea I may, may have had, but you can also like harvest like the idea you may have had and alter the idea and increasingly have this sort of evolution, biology, you know, going down the road of the bio, uh, uh, on, the, on the biology DNA type of uh, uh, yeah. evolution, so to say. I think that that is something I'd be super excited about to in more in. Great company, I agree. So on a totally different note, <clears throat> real talk, what was your biggest portfolio fuck up? Oh, we don't have that. Okay, uh, let me try not. again. It's not, it's not No possible. bullshit, real time. What was your biggest portfolio fuck up? Well, we, only, we only have new beginnings, you know what I mean? Like this is uh, <clears throat> sometimes- ah, All about sometimes, the mindset. Some, sometimes we, we, sometimes we, we, we had, um, 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 <clears throat> companies who came out with an, a great looking product very well developed and then uh, they just can't come to an end so mm -hmm, they keep mm -hmm. developing and then they keep developing yeah. and, then, and then you turn around and you come back after a while and they keep developing and keep developing it's like guys when is that going to be ready when, when are you going to put it out to the community to get like more input and whatnot yeah hey, give us another day or then week and then another month and you keep coming back it's like you know we're still not finished yet so i think that's one of those patterns in some companies we've seen uh where we where, where would have sometimes which obviously i didn't would have kicked some people's ass just like say like it's pencils down and whatever you have now like the, the class uh, finished work is finished and now i take the paper away and whatever is on the paper is what you what, what you're going to be showing out to the market all right last question but not that this ever happened to one of our portfolio companies yeah absolutely absolutely as, it was just as you, uh, as you can imagine yeah it was just hypothetically totally synthetically it, it's virtually a, it's, it's a virtual not real thing. not real uh, absolutely yeah. It was in virtual case, talk, not, in, not real talk. In which case we would have, you know, turned the dial and then yeah. the whole reality would have changed instantly. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my last question. Time for a shout out. Who, in your opinion, are the top European gaming experts? So gaming experts, I mean, there's many uh, different gaming experts. You mean like on the investing side or advising side or entrepreneurial? Both. Like, who would you like, if you would be a private equity fund um, investing in gaming, who would be a great advisor? I would definitely call my two partners, Scott and Jens. Just can't. So 
not inspirational. Okay. <laughs> this is very inspiring. It's very inspiring. <laughs> I, have you met them? They're very, inspiring. very inspiring. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like you, you are enough. What, for you, me. Do you don't think so? I think yeah. I should. No, no, no. I, I just. Was, I should introduce you. you. Absolutely, should introduce you. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, yeah, you should. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Malte. Nice catch. Nice catch. Yeah, Malte. Uh, enjoyed our talk. Thanks I, a lot. I did too. Thanks. This time, I think we did way better than the first attempt. So if you what, keep that, what uh, was the first attempt? Yeah. What's the first attempt? Like our uh, our viewers don't know about that. What are you talking about? I know probably the first attempt was when we were sitting in the same office in Hamburg uh, near the River Alster, but nobody recorded ever that conversation. Luckily. I see. Luckily. It's 15 years back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Malte, thank you. Thank you, Izzy. Talk to you soon. It's been, uh, been, uh, been a blast. It was okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.